My name is Joe Ekosiso, and I am a financial student of Medical Laboratory Sciences from the University of Nigeria, Enugu Campus. And by God's grace, the president of the Nigerian Medical Laboratory Sciences Student Association in the same campus here, in Enugu Campus. Medical Laboratory Sciences is actually a health science professional course that trains students on how to use various human samples to diagnose whether there is a presence, extent or absence of disease. And through their work, they actually determine how a patient can be treated. So that's basically what med lab science is all about. I decided to study medical laboratory sciences because when I was small in the village, I was actually having a lot of uh, stories about how people die without knowing the cause of the problem. Some people die because of ordinary diarrhea, which they don't know the origin of the diarrhea. Some people die because of headache and other things. So I said, let me go and know what is the problem of my people. Because they call me lab scientists as uh, oracles of modern medicine. So without them, they are the people that people actually wait for to hear from them. Without them, we don't know the actual cause of a problem. So that is why I said to study medical laboratory sciences. Medical laboratory sciences is studied for five years in the university. In Nigeria here, various universities train the students for a maximum of five years before they become qualified medical laboratory scientists. <music> Mid lab science is actually a very lucrative uh, profession because there are many options that you can actually choose in your final years. And of course, there are many places that you can, you can actually enter when you eventually become a mid lab scientist. And again, you can work in the hospital and see what other places that we, we still talk about. And then um, lastly, you can open your own laboratory or even join with others. There are many things you can actually do as a mid lab scientist. So it's a, a very lucrative career that you can choose. There's always a confusion between MLS and MLT. MLS are those ones that study their own in the universities for five years and they are licensed medical laboratory scientists and of course they can open the laboratory. While MLT are those ones that study in the head colleges and they have no access to open a laboratory. So that's the major difference between the two of them. So the MLT study for three years while MLS is for five years. At the end of the program uh, in school, we must have become a licensed medical laboratory scientist. Firstly, you are supposed to be inducted into the profession, MLSCN, and that is when you become a licensed medical laboratory scientist. Then after that, you have to go for a mandatory or compulsory one-year internship. Then after that, you have to go for one-year national youth service, uh, NYSC. So that is how it is. To become a medical laboratory scientist in Nigeria, the journey actually starts from secondary schools, where you have to become firstly a science student, of course by doing biology in your school, chemistry, physics, mathematics, use of English and so many others. At least this one should be the basic in secondary schools. You have to get no less than C5 in all of them. So that's how it starts. And of course if you want to register for JAMB, firstly you have to put biology chemistry, physics, uh, use of English in your jam UTME. So that's what is needed there. And of course, maybe if you have uh, entered school before, like you have entered the Polytechnic, the College of Education, or maybe you have something, or maybe in the university, or you have something like uh, an MLT, and you want to enter to study medical laboratory sciences through direct entry, you have to enter through jam direct entry and process your admission. So there are basically two ways how you can uh, study medical laboratory sciences. Number one, by entering through jam UTME, and number two, by entering through jam direct entry admission. What they do basically is that they collect samples from individuals who are sick, uh, the patients who are sick who enter the hospital, they collect samples from them. And when they collect samples from them, they try to analyze the samples to know what actually is the cause of the problem. When they collect samples, they ensure that they put it in appropriate sample containers. There's no cause actually that is actually less stressful or not stressful at all. At least from the journey of going to the classes, going to lectures, the journey of doing your practicals, the journey of going to clinical postings at uh, teaching hospitals, the journey of doing your seminars and the other things contribute to stress. So there's no cause basically that is not stressful at all, so may, including medical laboratory sciences. <music> 
if you talk about the job opportunities in medical, medical laboratory sciences, there are a whole lot of them. Though most people actually think that it's all about becoming a bench scientist. When I mean a bench scientist, I mean those ones that actually enter the hospital and start performing tests, like malaria tests, typhoid tests, all these uh, um, anemia tests and the rest of them. So that's not all you should be doing as a medical laboratory scientist. There are many others. Firstly, you can become a bench scientist, like I said before. Number two, you can become somebody like, um, let's say, you can work in a research institute. Number three, you can work in all these uh, government agencies like NCDC, you can work in World Health Organization, you can work in NAFDAQ and mineral places, you can work as a lecturer in the university, you can work, there are many places you can work, so there are vast opportunities you can work in medical laboratory sciences. There's a, also another one again they call uh, equipment importation, equipment uh, repair, equipment maintenance and a whole lot of them. Those ones are actually there in medical equipment, all these laboratory equipment, they import them, they install them, they, they repair them and maintain them. So that's all actually at another uh, job opportunity. And of course, if you have the money, you can open your own laboratory and become a, a, a lab owner. Not just a laboratory where you can actually be doing medical tests. You can actually become, open a lab where you can be doing research, uh, researches and you can call that a research laboratory. One might ask if medical laboratory sciences or medical laboratory scientists are in demand. And I will answer yes. They are in demand because as we keep on getting sick, you also need more hands to actually analyze the samples, to know the cause of the problems and how they can be treated. Not minding that um, there are a lot of other uh, automation in the profession, but that is actually basic, that is affecting the whole world as well. Because it's not only in the health sector that we have technology, there are still automation and play, uh, uh, a lot of other development in every aspect of life that make life easy. Mid lab scientists are in demand because we still need hands to help out analyzing samples. Even the machines that have been produced, people still need to be killed enough to handle them. And they, these are the works of a medical laboratory scientist. We have the hematology and histopathology. So all these are areas where you can actually specialize and of course when you graduate and maybe you are able to maybe reach out abroad or somewhere else, you can actually specialize in any of these places and develop your skills more. We have four options. We have medical microbiology, we have hematology, we have clean chemistry and we have histopathology. So these are areas where you can actually specialize and become a potent medical laboratory scientist. We don't just specialize. We call we have areas where we major and where we minor. Yeah, you may major in medical microbiology and minor in hematology, or you major in clean chem and minor in histopath. So there are areas where you can actually major and become uh, potent enough. You don't just go to university. Do from your third year to the final year, you actually do all these courses. You do medical microbiology. You do medical uh, hematology. You do clean chem. You do histopath. You do immunology and a whole lot of others. But when it comes to final year, you have to choose an area where you have to specialize and become expert in that area. So that is that is about specialization. Medical laboratory scientists can become medical doctor if you want, but that is not in the course of the training. You have to finish your medical laboratory science program, then enter into the medical school and maybe you pass through the own training too, because the curriculum are not the same. So for you to become a medical doctor as a medical laboratory scientist, you have to pass through the training as well. Just like a medical doctor wanting to become a medical laboratory scientist, you still have to pass through the school of medical laboratory sciences for them to license you. When it comes to the pay or how much medical laboratory scientists earn per month here in Nigeria, it varies per hospital. You know, what the federal uh, government pays may not be what the uh, state government pays, and that may not be what uh, a private institute pays. But basically, on the average, I don't think any medical laboratory scientist collects less than 150000 per month. And again, it depends on your, 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 your years of experience. The, 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 the amount that a, someone who has zero experience, zero years of experience collects, is not the, the same amount that five years of experience collects. And that's not the same amount that someone who has ten years of experience collects. So the pay depends on the, the, uh, on the institute where you're working, whether it is a government institute, a state-owned institute, or a private-owned institute. And depends on your year of uh, experience. The first thing that people actually misbelieve about medical laboratory science is that they are not very relevant. Maybe because they don't actually meet them when they enter the hospital. And of course, um, it's true that they don't have direct contact with patients because they stay in an enclosed room, which they call the laboratory, to perform tests that actually determine whether you will live, 
how long you will stay in the hospital and the rest of them. So they are quite important and uh, you can't say that they are not very relevant in the hospital. Medical laboratory science is actually a cause that is actually uh, recognized worldwide. If you go to different countries, they are known by different names. If you go to UK, they are called by medical scientists. If you go to U uh, USA, they have a different name. If you go to Canada, Australia, Northern Ireland, and many other places, they have different, different names that are being called. So it's actually a cause that is needed everywhere, not just here in Nigeria. And of course, as we keep on having people who are sick, we have to keep on having medical laboratory scientists who should be de determining uh, the kind of or the cause of the, the, the disease and uh, how it can be treated. So that's basically what medical laboratory uh, science is all about. So it's needed everywhere as far as uh, people keep on getting sick and as, as far as we are, uh, we want the side to keep on going and as far as we want vaccine other things to keep on uh, springing up. So medical laboratory scientists are actually uh, uh, started after. Like I said initially in the beginning of this uh, program, that they are known as oracles. Just like in those olden days in Africa where if you don't have, uh, if, you ha if, if, if there's a problem, for instance, and they are looking for an oracle to come and speak, except the oracle talks, no one else actually knows what is the problem. So everybody waits for the oracle to speak. In a typical hospital in, in Nigeria and the rest of the world, if you have uh, a patient who is having abdominal issues, let's say diarrhea, who is having headache, who is having uh, nausea, you may not know what the patient, the patient is suffering from because they are Many things that actually cause uh, such symptoms. It could be from par uh, parasites, it could be from viruses, it could be from uh, fungi, it could be from bacteria. So you have to diagnose to know the exact cause of the issue. Because if you don't know the exact cause of the issue, you might, you might actually go and give a wrong drug to the patient, which will now increase what we call antimicrobial anti anti resistance. And of course, when that happens, we enter into a bigger problems more than the one that we are trying to solve. There are a whole lot of opportunities abroad for medical laboratory scientists. Of course, in Nigeria here, as a qualified medical laboratory scientist, you can work abroad. In UK, you can enter UK through a program they call HACPC. Through HACPC, you can enter UK and work as a medical laboratory scientist. Um, uh, through KORU, uh, you can work as a medical laboratory scientist in Northern Ireland. If you go to US, they have their own too. If you go to Australia, they have their own too. If you go to Canada, they have their own too. So as a medical laboratory scientist, you can work in several places abroad. And that's basically why we have specialties here in Nigeria, to prepare you ahead of the journey in case you want to leave Nigeria to work abroad. So when you get abroad, you can specialize in that area where you majored here in Nigeria. It could be in histopaths, it could be in clean chem, it could be in um, uh, medical microbiology, it could be in, hem in hematology. So there are a vast, vast opportunities that are many of them where you can actually work as med lab scientists. <music>